Ladies and gentlemen, hi. My name is Amerigo Cassiano, and it's always great to be here. So I'm one of the few early guys who started all this. So to see you and new generations here is great. We're, before I introduce the next uh, featured poet, we're going to take about two seconds while they add chairs. We're having such a great attendance, and we just want to open up and add more chairs so that everybody can sit comfortably and enjoy what's happening. Um, while we do that, why don't we give a tremendous round of applause to all that has just happened yeah. from, from the beginning till now. Some outstanding interpretive music, great musicians here. Um, I'm very proud to know that, uh, I know a lot of you don't know who in the world this dude is, right? Okay. But I'm... Um, I go back to that generation uh, with Lewis. I ain't gonna tell you my age now. Um, we took over people's churches and we took over everything else and we started what is now the legacy of New Rican School or New Rican Poetry, our Poets Cafe. Um, I've taken the, uh, the wonderful um, task of continuing this through something that's called the New Rican School Poetry Jazz Ensemble. I'm asking everybody to come out. There's a postcard on the table for the Bronx Book Fair, and we've been honored to uh, open it up. So one, the book fair is free. Come and support your writers. The overwhelming majority of the 20 odd tables that are there are all writers of color who want you to know who they are so that you can buy their texts and support what we started umpteen decades ago. And I'm talking before me. Our literature begins prior to this phenomenon. Our lit literature goes back into the 1800s, if not more. So continue the legacy. I'm asking Saturday, May 30th, beginning at 12 o'clock through 6 p.m., the Bronx Book Fair at the Bronx Library Center, 310 Kings Ridge Road, right, just, just north of, uh, of Fordham Road. Um, I was asked, or we were all asked, to make mention of our guest writers and why they're linked to Lewis or why, how we perceive them to be um, of the thinking and of, of the thoughts of Lewis Reyes Rivera. Uh, to begin with, my next, uh, our next guest, first and foremost, was something that Lewis was always about, supporting aspiring writers. Second, um, he was always about supporting those writers or artists in general of color who had a commitment to something, whether it be their, their cause or a mass people's cause. And this next poet um, does that in my book. In my book. And, and thirdly, she's committed to the written word in, in many of the ways that Louis Reyes Rivera was committed to the written word. The opening video, I think, has a good introduction of how art and consciousness and commitment to something and a context is very much important, how it works for the sake of creativity. It's not just creativity and it's abstract. And I studied all that from Tesara to a whole lot of other things I ain't going to tell you about. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, um, she has all that Lewis was about, and I thought it'd be great. Um, I nominated her and, and several others, and I was glad that she was uh, picked. Miriam Rodriguez, born in New York City, um, began writing at age seven, was inspired, and, and in early ages wrote an a ode to her father, which began her travel through this creative road. And I think, um, on those three points I stated, style, commitment to cause, and the written word, very important that, that the people understand Lewis was committed to the written word. Um, and of course, uh, be, be a hardworking, um, never holding back, aspiring writer. And that who this is, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to, bring, to introduce to you Miss Miriam, with an E, <laughs> Miss Miriam Rodriguez. Thank you. 
Thank you, Americo. That means a lot to me. Um, I actually did the book fair in the Bronx that um, he's speaking about, and it was nice to see people actually come out and support it. Um, the arts, um, it's, it's only now that, thank you, that the arts and the uh, creative world is reintroducing itself to the Bronx. Um, there was kind of a, a lack of it, and I think us as writers, artists, graffiti artists, rappers, um, photographers, all, all types of mediums, we're acknowledging um, the need for our cre creativity, excuse me, creativity in the Bronx. Um, so that's a big deal for me. Um, I'm going to start off my first piece with a little bit of a backstory because this piece comes from a little bit of a conversation uh, with family that they don't realize how important writing is to me and how, how much of a, it's my baby. <laughs> Um, so as I get older, the common question is, Miriam, when are you going to have a baby? <laughs> so I started off with, but Titi, this mouth has birthed earths of dirt, blood, roots, boots, leaves, limbs, grass, grit, and wit. I have created and destroyed worlds with these lips. Between the base of my hips, I eclipse. Spiraling from my solar plexus, galaxies have been born in my lower extremities. Visual symphonies lyrically woven, laced with every color of the spectrum. Spun with momentum, words spoken into existence, met with resistance. From soil to gravel into cyclones blown upwards towards the cosmos. We, we are celestial beings meeting at the cornerstone of flesh and bones, humbly and otherwise known as human. Divine confusion, we contort these illusions to fit our belief systems, truths, and blueprints. Grand architects infused with faith and purpose. Some even bathe in churches to wash away the sludge because they keep us in the mud trying to separate us from love. We are tools of the universe and its gods. Same force, different jihad, identical messages, competing firing squads causing me to question whether this intelligent design is flawed. In the age of information and communication, how have we become so lost in translation? Humanity versus corporation, paying no mind to the voice behind the curtain. But this, this is no conspiracy theory. Just input the data into your iPhone. Ask Siri. These times are scary. With high volatility, minimal mobility, we have reached a boiling point. And like crabs in a bucket, we are bound to drown due to ego and emotional luggage. Emotional ruckus is causing us to lose focus. Too blinded to the bigger picture. Too much binding to corrupted scriptures to just look into someone's eyes and envision similar struggles, priorities being juggled, a parallel of loves, lives and lies, a carousel of loss, highs and cries, too many goodbyes. We, we are lacking the emotional support that can't quite be conveyed through an email. And God's voicemail is full. These days, the only thing I have of value are my words, so I'm trying to leave as many as I can strewn into the intersections of memories being threaded daily. I feel like I need to leave something behind. Every conversation I engage in of substance carry messages in abundance. Feels like I'm communing with prophets in bars and lounges, consuming wines and spirits, intoxicating lines and lyrics to watch our back of the critics and carry forth our lineage. This revives an image of mommy and papi always trying to protect me. My ancestors guiding me. Family members asking when I'm going to have a baby. I promise I will leave a legacy. I promise I will leave descendants. I just can't promise that there will be children. Sorry. OK, my next piece. I actually performed this um, a couple of weeks ago at the Bowery Poetry Club. And um, it, was, um, it was a show honoring New York City, kind of just like the New York that we know, minus the gentrification, you know? <laughs> so here we go. 
Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Let's hear it for New York, New York, New York. Sorry, I don't have a nice voice to sing, but I try. <laughs> Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Dun, dun. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I've got some dollars and some dreams, busting pipes and popping seams. Seems like nothing is quite what it seems in a city of trigger happy NYPD. Hounding brothers I consider family. Courtesy, professionalism, respect. CPR is the acronym they are hired to honor and reflect, resuscitate and correct, connect. But what? If the subject is a rape suspect or a despondent reject determined to break the internet with special reports and bodies on the floor, what well, we embody will unfurl while Saudis and Illuminatis rule the world. Starving, starving artists are swirling gold, thieves swallowing souls to be sold. The money is old, the test is rooted in their bones. Oh, oh, now you're in New York. My spirit hides its free in efforts to protect me. Trouble in bends and alleyways will devour you if you're too friendly. I might be smiling and dancing on the inside while jaws clench and I grip my teeth on the outside. Dark-hearted men size me up, I respond with snubs. Eyes focus, close up. Raise my brow, dead stare, close up, soldier up. I have no fear of you, sir, cause New York is protecting her. I can feel its love through the blur. I'm more concerned with gridlock traffic, delayed trains, misconnections, pedestrian tourists, and awkward looks from hipsters if my slang is too New York for their Midwestern twang, man. Let me show you a few things. These streets have a way of tightening your stance. Have you questioning your very existence? Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry for the interruption. I'm just trying to raise a few dollars to feed my daughters for my basketball team because I'm cold and hungry. Why lie, I just wanna get high. Subway tunnels, 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will have you questioning your very existence or priming the sublime meanings of life and the afterlife. Revelations and rails, trailing sublimations and shots of Jameson. Drink water for hydration so I can still make morning meditation cause this city needs all the prayer and care it can get. I found God in the eyes of a homeless man. He told me he was a veteran. No wife or children, no purple heart, no lost limbs, and the Veterans Association has limited coverage for the parts of his spirit that went missing in the war. In a parallel universe, he's a prophet with Lauren Hill saving worlds instead of popping pills. I found angels in the strumming of guitar strings being made love to by a 60-something-year-old ting, bohemian woman king, acoustic guitar, transcendent lucid music, backdrop by subway cars. 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, location 42nd Street in Times Square, and I swear they have seen some shit together. The music keeps them believing in forevers. Now you're in New York. I found my way to heaven via a Central Park pond and the laughter of children careening with bubbles in the wind, yet I found pain two minutes away in a horse's neigh as his driver slaved him away with scrapes on his belly. I found redemption on park benches from incessant, incessant mental conversations manifesting life lessons while loving myself more than my sins and imperfections. I've learned if you plant trees into Bronx Concourse arteries, you can pray for rain, but you still have to water your own seeds because growing flower bed brains can still be freed. You feel me? I've got a pocket full of dreams, baby. I'm from New York. Melting pot, fusion, multicultural, spiritual gumbo of worldliness meets godliness in the city of Babylon, crumbling into Gotham, resurrecting gods and goddesses, communion, consuming brewed booze, pouring port wine for the divine from the caves to the gates to, to the graves to the pearly white gates, heaven awaits. It's a new dawn, it's a new day in New York City if you're peering through the lens of a sacred cleanse. My friends and I are here to spread the word with our pens. So here's the question. How many of us have learned to listen to the hearts of the innocent, the healed, and the scarred? Now you're in New York. Make it 